Um, so brand driven would like to ask, um, who did you use for PR? And I might broaden the question to say, did you bring in PR firms? Did you do most of the PR yourself? And what lessons could you give people about PR? How early in the company should one start PR? Uh, do you need to have in-house PR skills? Do you believe in working with agencies? What types? Yeah, so, so a couple of things. One, um, lo in Lower My Bill's case, it, early on, it was sort of a blend of both. I had three, three people, and this sounds crazy, I hired three mm. people out of ACT software at once. Yep. Um, and so, as you can tell, I love the hiring teams. Yeah. <laughs> at once, the, the, the previous company doesn't like that when you do that, but for me, it works. Yeah. So I hired three people on staff. They went nuts. I supplemented that with an agency, and um, I'm a believer in both. I think agencies are great. Like, um, in Los Angeles recently, I've worked with a company called Verse Communications. Okay. I think they're terrific. Yeah. Um, but I think that one of my things I've learned about PR is two things. One is that if you really, um, most people think about PR around just product launches. Yeah. And that's great, but if you really wanna make PR a huge part of your business, you need to figure out a way to make news, where every week or every month you have something else to say so that you can get consistency out of that. Additionally, and I, this plays into this, is that I think you have to mix it up. It's not possible for one agency mm -hmm. for five years to be good on your product, right. just like it, it would be impossible for my in-house people on PR to be good for five years. Some, people run out of their contacts or their ideas or their creativity, mm -hmm. and I think inevitably you have to mix that up a little bit over time. So some of the tips I normally give, and feel free to react if you agree or disagree, feel free to disagree. Number one is I think PR has to start at the top of the company. It's very hard when you have a founder CEO who wants PR to happen, but wants to kind of delegate it to a marketing person mm -hmm. because in the early stage of the businesses, they want you. Number two is PR has to be consistent. It can't be, I'm gonna do PR for two months, and then when we're ready to talk again, we talk for two months. Um, I think you need a consistent campaign where you may spend more around certain activities, mm -hmm. But the key to PR for me is building relationships, authentic relationships with journalists over time. And it may be that when you want to say something, they're not ready to cover you. Uh, and if it turns into sour grapes because you didn't get covered, you're just screw yourself for the next time. What I do is, I so just last thing, is I have a consistent campaign to build meaningful relationship with journalists mm -hmm. over time. And the truth of the matter is, and you know I, I'm a writer, I like to write, um, I have respect for their profession and what they do, and I enjoy it, and I enjoy to see how they frame arguments and whatever. And so I build real relationships. When it comes time to get covered, if they like you and you've been helpful and you've been useful and you're not just bullshitting them on this story, mm -hmm. you, you, it's not terribly hard to get coverage over time under those circumstances. Yeah, I totally agree. It's just like raising capital. Yeah. It's the exact same thing, exactly, which yeah. is what you want is constant dialogue. You should not really look at it as, hey, for in this month I'm doing this. And like, it's just like when I hear guys say, hey, we're going to raise capital yeah. in June. Yeah. I'm like, that's ridiculous. My